I'm going to start out with some context. I live in a fairly large trailer park. It's lined with trees on all sides, as well as hills going up on three sides. And sadly, isn't a gated community. Anyone or anything can come and go as they please. And it seems to happen a lot since there are two main entrances. A walking path entrance and many, many paths cut into the hills by pedestrians. My neighborhood was relatively quiet when I first moved in over 20 years ago. There were very tangible dangers like shootings, arson, drug deals, meth labs, etc. So needless to say, I'm a little less than thrilled that otherworldly things seem to happen as well. About 10 years ago, I and a few other neighbors noticed weird things happening. I've had invisible things run up on me multiple times often sounding like a dog or another large animal charging at me. Around Christmas time a few years back, I went outside to take the trash out, only to hear someone follow me, breathe down my neck, and growling in my ear like a fucking demon. Except no one was there. Nobody was caught on my mom's camera. No movement at all except me walking and freaking out. The weirdness seemed to slow down a couple years ago, but now... It appears to be picking back up. This happened a week ago. I was taking my trash can to the curb when I heard what sounded like a dog in the distance, barking and howling. That's not unusual around here. There are a few families who either have no control over their dogs and they either escape or let them out to roam the park. I know nearly every one and none of them are vicious. There's a couple GSDs, a few pit bulls, and one particularly stupid and timid chocolate lab. The bark didn't sound like any of them. In fact, none of them are that vocal. Of course, it's not a gated community, so any dog wandering around town can come in, but I digress. Halfway through the yard, the hairs on my neck stood up. The bark suddenly sounded different. It sounded like a dog, mixed with a human pretending to be a dog. When I first exited the house, it sounded like it was almost on the other side of the park. But the further away from the house I got, the closer it sounded. And it sounded like it was moving faster than any dog I've ever seen. Finally at the curb, it sounded like it was all around me at once and still getting closer. I ran back and I swear when I got to the door, it sounded like it screamed. My doorbell camera picked up barking afterwards and it still sounded a bit off but nowhere near as bad as when I was at the curb. I don't know what it was. My fiance dismissed it as a crackhead having fun at my expense. And normally I'd agree with him, but the way the sound moved and multiplied all around me, I don't think a crackhead can do that. I've experienced something similar in another town that I lived in briefly. Not the barking, but how strange and unusual sounds seem to move and multiply. Anybody have any ideas or similar experiences? When I was 12, during that time, I often visited my grandmother's house, where she lived with my aunt. It was a large apartment located in an ancient building. Since I was a child, I never wanted to sleep there, although my aunt, very young compared to my parents, always wanted me to stay as we had a good relationship, and often stayed with her to prepare cakes, go out, go shopping, or spend time in other ways. I don't know why, but their bedrooms gave me the impression of having a negative aura or something. They were both located at the end of a long corridor. Respectively, my grandparents' bedroom was located exactly at the end of the corridor, while the one of my aunts also at the end, but on the right. Anyways, when I got older, I started spending more time with her, trying not to give weight to my instincts and staying there to sleep sometimes. The oddities appeared anyways. For example, I sometimes woke up at night to find the doors of the wardrobe open, but I always tried not to give it any weight, convincing myself that they were already like this before. One night, however, what finally convinced me to never sleep with them again. I had gone to sleep a little later that evening, but there was something strange in the air that kept me awake. I tried not to think about it, but I just couldn't sleep. After a while, 
I finally fell asleep. I woke up about two hours later, this time without noticing the doors of the wardrobes open. I was still in a state of torpor, but I had woken up with my body extremely tense and looking forward. I had forgotten the light of the lamp. I noticed a strange figure entering on all fours from the door. Initially, she had just looked out the door. Then she started walking towards my bed. But my God, it looked like something monstrous. It was like a rake with long black hair and a face with multiple scratches. At this point, I was terrified and I started calling my brother by name. I don't know why. The thing became more interesting and was literally climbing on my bed when suddenly he ran away from the door. A few seconds later, my grandmother entered, asking me if everything was okay and noting that I was white as a corpse. Well, what can I say? That night I slept on the couch. So this all started a couple of months ago, maybe towards the end of 2021. I used to work at a cafe close to where I live. And one night I had a dream that I was standing in the cafe I worked at, but it looked completely different than how it is. Different paint on the walls, tables in different positions and in different areas than usual. Different workers, everything was just so different. But I could recognize it was the cafe I worked at. I worked there for five years, so I knew where everything was. The coffee machine was in the same spot, the fireplace in the same spot with the same couches. In the dream, I was standing at the coffee machine when the barista told me to take a coffee into the side room of the cafe. So I grabbed it and took it over. I woke up and didn't think much of it. Well, a couple of weeks later, the cafe gets bought by someone and we had a week or two off work for them to redecorate the cafe to their vision for the place. Well, on my first day, I walk in and feel a kind of familiarity about the place and chalk it up to, well, I've worked here for five years. It may look different, but it's the same building. Well, at some point in the first week of the new ownership, I'm standing at the coffee machine and the barista asks me to take a coffee over to a table in the side room of the cafe. As I grab the coffee and turn to walk into the side room, I had a massive wave of deja vu, but it was so much stronger. If you guys have ever had deja vu, imagine that feeling and make it stronger by about 10 times. I was standing in the exact same spot as I was in the dream. The design looked the same as the dream. Even the workers looked the same as my dream, and that was my first time meeting them. My whole mind was blurry. I couldn't think of anything besides, I've been here, I've done this. Not a feeling of, I feel like I've done this, but the feeling of, I have done this. Next dream I had, and sorry I don't have the exact dates, I didn't think this would become sort of a regular occurrence. Anyway, now this dream also takes place before the cafe I worked at got bought by someone. I had a dream I was sitting in bed with a girlfriend I didn't even have yet. I knew she was a girlfriend, or at least someone I felt comfortable with because I felt calm, secure, and warm just sitting there on my bed. We were talking about something, and the conversation that led us to the conversation of what porn I watch. I know. We had conversation to have in a dream. We laughed, I told her, and I woke up. I thought it was a bit of a weird dream, because who the hell dreams about telling someone what porn they watch? But I went on with my life. Well, cut forward to when the cafe gets bored. I met a girl there. She was cool. I planned on quitting my job there and trying to find something else with my life to do for work. Well, on my last day, I gave this girl my phone number. And we got to talking and eventually started hanging out a bunch and getting closer and closer. Well, guess what? We're sitting on my bed, same positions on my bed, same hairstyle, same colored hair, same smiling, same feeling as the dream. And we were just talking and eventually, the conversation wound up her asking me what porn I watch. We laughed, I told her, and again, massive wave of deja vu hit me like a truck. Now, it's not weird for someone you're seeing to be interested in the porn you watch, but it's weird that it was exactly how it was in my dream. Next, I'm still seeing the girl and we've made it official by this point. It's my birthday and my mother is driving me, my girlfriend and my two best friends to a local pub. 
so we could drink and not need to worry about someone being the designated driver and needing to hold back their alcohol. I'm sitting in the middle in the back seats, and as we drove past some random tree, I have a massive wave of deja vu and I ask, hey guys, have we ever been driven somewhere in these exact seats, going this exact direction to this exact pub? Everyone says no. Now this doesn't sound weird, but look at it like this. It's my 20th birthday. I haven't been in my mum's car since I was 17 and didn't have a license when I was 17. I wasn't even friends with one of my friends yet, and I sure as hell wasn't dating this girl because I only met her a couple months before. Next dream, I had quit my cafe job and I was unemployed for maybe two or three months. I had enough savings and I was just trying to go out as much as I could because I didn't have much time off when I was working. So I spent Christmas and all that with my family and just went out drinking with friends and hung out with them a whole lot. But all of this is besides the point. During my unemployment, I had a dream I worked somewhere with one of my female friends. In the dream, I was standing in the kitchen with her just polishing some cutlery and talking. In the conversation, I said a joke. She laughed. And then I woke up and I just laid there like, why the fuck am I dreaming of her laughing to some dumbass joke? Well, eventually, she sent me a Facebook post about her work hiring, and she told me to apply, and I thought, fuck it. Working with one of my close friends sounds kind of nice. I got the job and started working in the bar. After about two weeks, my boss sat me down and told me he was really happy with my work and blah, blah, blah. Just stroked my ego and then told me he wants to put me into some different departments so he could get me some more hours. I said, yeah, that sounds nice and he started putting me into the kitchen. Well, after maybe two weeks of being in the kitchen, I worked with my female friend. We're standing there, polishing some cutlery and just chatting because it wasn't busy. I said a joke, the same joke as in my dream. She laughed and again, a massive wave of deja vu to the point where I had to put my hand onto the table to hold myself up. The last time was a couple of weeks ago where me and my two mates went out drinking at a pub I hadn't been to since I was like eight. I'm not able to drink. Me and my two mates were standing up at the bar and I got really fixated on staring out the window behind it and looking at the beach and again, deja vu, which was weird because again, I haven't been there since I was like eight. These are only the dreams I remember. I feel like there's more, but I'm slowly forgetting them. Since then, I haven't had a dream about my future. It kind of all happened at once and I haven't had one in a little while. If anyone knows what this is and there's anywhere else I can post this, please let me know. I've been interested in the paranormal for as long as I can remember and have been investigating the paranormal for about 12 years now. I purchased three haunted dolls a year ago, and up until now, all has been quiet, except for one incident that happened a few months ago. A few months ago, I was laying in bed, desperate to use the bathroom, but not wanting to breathe the cold. Being the only person in the house, I hear someone, psst, stage whisper style behind me. It takes me a minute to brave turning over, but when I did, there was nothing and nobody there. I have no explanation for this sound, none of my electronics make this noise, and nor does anything else in my house. My cats do not have access to my bedroom or the hallway leading to the bedroom while I sleep. We can't hear their noises from the bedroom, and nothing more until last week. My partner has a cylindrical massage roller. It sits underneath the exercise bike. So we're sitting watching TV, and the roller rolls across the room out of nowhere. Nothing interacted with it. I accept that there's a possibility that it could have fallen, but with how it usually sits, it seems unlikely. It also has never happened before and hasn't happened since. My cats have one of those little balls that lights up when something touches it. The last two days, it's been lighting up randomly on its own. I hear this can happen when the batteries are low, but this was a fresh ball about a week ago. And today, sitting quietly, scrolling social media, the guitar that sits on its stand across the lounge from the sofa randomly rings out. All cats were sleeping at the time. Nothing was around it to fall and hit the strings. Again, 
I just don't have an explanation for it. I plan to do some EVP work with the dolls and see whether anything comes of it, but my house also sits on the site of an old hospital and has a church and cemetery just across the street too, so who knows what may, might be going on. This is super exciting for me, but I'm remembering to keep my skeptical brain on and trying to debunk everything. It might sound crazy, but I'll start from the beginning. A few years ago, my grandma, who was 87, fell down and was brought to the hospital where they found out that she had a cancer and that she didn't have long to live anymore. Problem was, my wife and I had to explain it to my mom and my aunts, knowing that my aunt was fighting cancer at the moment and was in another hospital. My wife and me took all the responsibility for taking care of everything for my grandma since she almost raised me while growing up. And since she didn't want to stay in the hospital, we go her into a great elderly home where she felt better in. And it was only exactly 30 minutes away from where my aunt's was. Please remember the 30 minutes. Now comes what started to frighten me. My grandma was getting morphine because of the pain she had and was sometimes saying things that were somehow not able to explain. Like looking at a wall and telling me my dad was proud of me even though we died years before. Second thing, my grandma was German and couldn't speak English, and my dad was American, so how could she understand him? Or telling me that she's spoken with my uncle that died a year before my dad died. The doctor told me that it was normal because of the morphine she was getting, but I should act like it's normal and not take her out of her. Like he said, little world, because she wouldn't understand it. The thing was, her little world started becoming mine in some way. We were by her every day that she's not alone, but we took times to get food or drinks. My wife took her turn and I was alone with my grandma. She was sleeping and woke up and started talking to the chair next to her and didn't even respond to me being there. I asked my grandma how she's talking to and she said, das klein Machten in German, that means the little girl. But no one was sitting there and only my grandma and me were in the room. But somehow I got goosebumps and a cold chill like the first few times, but didn't think much of it. Now comes the part where I started getting really creeped out. The next day, my wife and me were sleeping at home and I felt someone shaking my leg. I thought it was my wife trying to wake me up to go to my grandma, but when I opened my eyes, my wife was laying next to me. I looked down and for me, it looked like a little girl around six or seven years old that looked sad with clothing from what I could tell late 1940 to 50. Thing is, we have no children. I closed my eyes thinking, okay, you're dreaming, but I felt it again, but more like I know you're awake. Then I heard my wife tell me I should stop wiggling because I'm shaking our bed. And it stopped. I look up again and no one was there. I didn't tell my wife because I thought she would say I'm nuts, and I might have just been seeing things. We went to my grandma, but this time, I went to get something to eat, and now my wife told me grandma talked to a little girl that wasn't there, but she didn't want to bother her, and that the morphine is really making her see things pretty bad. I asked my wife if it felt funny in some way, and she said the same as I felt where it happened to me. Later that night, we went to my aunt in the hospital to tell her what was going on. And my aunt told me that because of her medication, she's been sleeping the whole time. But if anything happens, we should tell her. After that, we went home and I went to take a shower. While doing so, I thought I heard a little girl humming. I looked at the shower curtains and it looked almost like a shadow of someone sitting in front of it. I washed the soap out of my face and looked, but nothing. I asked my wife after I came out if she was maybe in the bathroom. She said no, but next time I should stop humming like the little girl. I wanted to tell her, but I didn't really know what to say. In the morning, I went and shaved while I was over the sink. So I washed my face from the shaving cream and went to grab my towel. I was bending over the sink. I turned and the little girl was looking me straight in my face. I felt like something just took my air and I couldn't say nothing closed my eyes, she was gone. 
I got out of the bathroom, and my wife asked if everything was okay with me because I looked so pale. Really, what should I tell her that I'm flipping out? I couldn't explain it. Maybe not enough sleep or just the whole situation getting to me. But we got an hour away, and when we got to my grandma, the doctor came to us and said she doesn't have that much anymore, and that they can't understand how she's still alive and fighting. Somehow, like she's waiting for something. I went after that to the hospital my aunt was in, and she talked to the doctors that she wants to go to her mom one last time. They gave her a lot of strong medication for her pains, and since she was so skinny and could hardly walk, she got a wheelchair. We took a taxi, and we brought my aunt to her for the first time since my grandma had fallen down. The whole time before that, my grandma wasn't 100% there. But when my aunt came, she was all of a sudden the old grandma like we knew. One thing that got me was there was my grandma said to my aunt, I lost the child. If one more goes, I'm going with. Like I said, my uncle died and it broke my grandma's heart. And what I found out later is my grandma and grandpa had a girl after the Second World War that died young. Because of the flu, my aunt was the second child. We left them both alone. They talked for an hour or so, and we brought my aunt back to the hospital, where we got back to my grandma. She started crying and thanked us still, like we knew her in totally clear 100% normal. We left her that night, and like every day for the last two months, I woke up and told my wife I'm coming, so that we can go to my grandma. I turned around thinking just five more minutes, but I heard the voice of a little girl whispering in my ear, saying, it's okay, she'll be waiting. The thing is, it didn't scare me. I stopped up like all problems were gone. I went to make my coffee and get something to eat before we left to go to my grandma. 30 seconds after I got up, we got the call that she had just died. We took the city bus and went up to her and said goodbye. My wife said that she looked so peaceful and somehow happy. 50 minutes later, my wife got a call on her phone from a doctor telling us that my aunt died and if we could please come because her husband was totally lost and he would need help. We were shocked by two deaths in one day and telling my mom the bad news. We went into the hospital and the same thing again. We said our goodbye to my aunt and couldn't understand it. Later, the doctors told us my aunt died at 9.32 a.m. And we found out later that my grandma died at 10.02 a.m. 30 minutes apart in two different places that were only 30 minutes apart by bus or foot. The next day, where I went to the elderly home to pick up my grandma's stuff and paperwork, one of the nurses asked me if I knew a little girl. Because on the day my grandma died, she was walking through the hallway where my grandma's room was. When the nurse went to look for the girl, she went to my grandma's room and saw my grandma take her last breath. She looked around really fast, not that the child was in the room and called the doctor. I said no, but I don't really know what to think about it all. Was it the same girl I've been seeing, or just a child that was visiting? After both died, I never saw the little girl again. But as I was clearing out my grandma's apartment, I looked into some old pictures and saw what I think was the little girl. I asked my mom, and she told me that it may be my aunt, where she was small, but it could be my other aunt who died at a young age. That's when I found out that my mom had a second older sister, because they all really looked alike when they were younger. I'm into haunted paranormal stuff, and had crazy stuff as a kid happen, but always thought it was a young kid's imagination. But seeing this still goes through my head, and I'm a grown man now. Did anything happen to someone in here like this? Because somehow I still think it might have been a lack of sleep, or just the whole situation. And it just happens that they died 30 minutes apart. My wife says my grandma kept her word and left with the child. Some say my aunt picked my grandma up, and that she knew that's why she kept fighting to stay alive. So that my aunt wouldn't have to go alone. But why did she see things? Was it really the morphine that made her see my uncle, dad, and stuff? Still don't get it. Somehow, it's hard for me to believe it myself. I would talk to my wife. But she would pack our bags and say we're moving out. Let's find a new apartment ASAP. She wouldn't even move into a place if she knew someone died there. When 
I was 20 in the summer, I decided I finally wanted to go to college, and so it happened. After checking different houses on the internet for the whole summer, I was nearly sure that I won't find a house because everything was either too expensive or too far from my college. So my godfather's cousin heard about it, and he told my father if he wanted to buy his house, it was a detached house with two apartments next to each other, that nobody lived there for the last 60 years. So my father happily bought it without many questions, even though the house was in bad condition. Fast forward. After fixing the house, my father left for my hometown, and I stayed here alone for the first time. Everything was awesome because I had my place, so I was more than happy for that. After sleeping in this house, I started having weird dreams, and the nights were so cold that I used to wake up and drink something hot. Otherwise, I couldn't continue my sleep. After a month, my sleep was really destroyed. I used to sleep for three or four hours due to the weird dreams and some weird noises that I heard from the apartment next to mine. Like someone knocking the door or a weird low whistle. But the idea of something supernatural was not on my mind. Because I don't believe in ghosts or in the supernatural. I believe that anything that dies will stay dead and nothing comes back to life after death. Fast forward. After four months, my girlfriend came to sleep at my house. We watched some movies, ate, and we went to sleep. I told her that if she feels cold, she should wake me up. I woke up in the middle of the night because of some weird noise outside my door. She woke up too due to the noise, and she turned the lights on and asked me what the fuck was that sound. And I didn't know what to tell her, to be honest. I didn't want to scare her, so I told her that probably that, that was the wind, but deep down, I knew that I'd heard that sound before. I waited for her to fall asleep and I went to check. I grabbed my phone and went to the next apartment. Nothing was there, so I returned back to my house and fell asleep. In the morning, she woke me up by saying, there's something strange in your door. I woke up and went to check. Something weird like water was in my door, but the smell was terrible. After that day, everything started being normal. Fast forward. Summer came and I went to visit my father in my hometown stayed there for about a month, and I had a few chances to talk with my godfather's cousin. We talked about many different stuff. One of the things I like the most is to know different stuff about religions, and he's a Jehovah's Witness. So after talking with him about his religion for hours, I felt that it was okay to ask him about all the things that happened to me, and about my house. And so I asked him about the house, and explained to him everything I went through. He didn't look surprised at all. Actually, his face expression was like he knew about all this, but avoided to say anything. So after a few drinks with him, it was time for me to leave since it was late. So I said goodnight and went off. While I was driving home, he called me and told me this exact line. If you want to know more about the house, ask me tomorrow. But be ready for what you'll hear. I was like, yeah, okay. I wasn't very sure what he meant. So I went to sleep without thinking about it too much next day came, so I went to visit him again. We sat outside, and so I started with the first question. So, what's up with the house? The expression in his face changed. He looked down and said the following. You know, I bought that house when I was a little older than you. I was a freshly married man, and I couldn't say too many no's to my wife when she wanted something. So we started trying to have a kid whenever she felt that she was ready. But every attempt was a failure. After years of trying, we got tired, and she decided she wanted to adopt her sister's daughter who was born with Down syndrome. I didn't mind at all. She looked happy, and we were happy too, and so it happened. She died four years later. I froze for a few seconds, trying to understand what all this had to do with my house being ghosted or some shit. So I asked him directly, So you're saying that the one ghosting my house is that girl? And he replied, I don't know, sadly. That was the reason we left. Athens as well, and we moved to this small town. I lost my words, but fast enough I changed the subject of the conversation. And after 30 minutes, I left. Fast forward. The days passed fast, and the day that I had to return back to Athens came. I didn't know what to expect, so I was trying to find a way in my mind to stop all this from happening again. When I came home, I found the same water in the floor, but this time it was coming from my apartment. My father was behind me and asked me what's up with the water in the floor and why it smells like this. But I lied to him because I was sure he wouldn't believe me if I told him about all this. 
Long story short, he left after two days and I was alone again. So the night came and I tried to sleep, but a friend called me to go out for some beers. And so I did. I returned home in the four of the morning and when I was trying to open my door half drunk, I heard something like, like a laugh, but it was very low in sound, which made me laugh back and go to the bed. The other day, as I was eating, I heard the door knocking. I went to open and it was a lady dressed in black. She asked me some stuff like how long did I live in the house and if I've noticed anything weird. I told her without thinking, yeah, that was stupid, some stuff. And she asked me if she could come in. I didn't know what to say, so I told her yes with a side smile. She came in my house and we talked, so I explained to her everything. And after that, I realized I didn't know her name. So I asked her and she replied, you can call me Vivi. And she told me that she can help me with this, but I needed to give her the key to open the apartment next to mine. I told her that the door was always unlocked, so she went to check and told me not to come. An hour had passed and I didn't hear any noise, so I thought it was right to go check. But when I tried to open the door, she came out with a bug of stuff like books, a dress, and some toys. Not sure about the toys. And she told me that everything will be fine from now on, and without any other words, she left. Three months passed and everything was normal, but who was she? How did she know about all this? What did she take? Were those the last items of that dead person? Why did she help me? Who are those people? Those questions have been in my mind till today, and I guess they'll stay forever. During my childhood, I would have these nightmares that would terrify me. In them, I was usually running in the woods that were behind my house, a good two or three acres worth. In those woods was a patch of dead pines. About 30 to 40 dead pines circled about in a 40 yard radius. I would always end up in the area in every nightmare and always feel pulled towards the center of the mass exodus of pines. In the center would be a pile of deer carcasses with a single deer carcass from the bottom of the ribs and up, sitting on top, with human hands and eyes of black. This deer boasts giant horns with lots of tines going in each direction. This deer welcomes me as soon as I appear, and speaks to me as if we've spoken many times. The worst part though, is that I remember the smell of decay and the cold that's put off of this figure. Each instance, we have conversations about life. I ask who it is, what it's doing here, and how I got here. Plenty of times, it responds the same each time. I'm the darkness with no name, and I inhabit this area. You found me, remember? Its voice echoes back. Ten years ago, these nightmares simply became dreams. They don't terrify me anymore, and I seem to look forward to them. The last one happened about a year ago, and I thought maybe posting this could help me fall back into them. I feel like a part of me is gone when they're not around. I don't know what this is. Does anyone have an idea of what I'm experiencing? Is my psyche damaged? Does it all have a meaning? My mom's side of the family has always been sensitive. Seeing spirits, feeling things, etc. When I was younger, I could see spirits and sense when they were near. I could also feel weight displacements and the like and sense intent from said beings. To say, not all are good or evil. Some are just doing their thing. Growing up, I had trouble sleeping and naturally became a night owl. I could only sleep on my side or I'd get sleep paralysis. I was in my teens that I supposedly was visited to the plains. A forest home, a golden city on a hillside, the dark church, various places. I would also experience with malevolent spirits who would spiritually oppress me. It would happen and I would struggle and struggle until I managed to break free. Kick a being, I didn't just break the oppression. I've broken out of my own body. The first time being in Japan, I went to sleep and woke up out of my body. Would keep walking away from it and repeatedly got pulled back by a tether or chain. It got to the point where if I was oppressed, I could at times break out of my body altogether. But this story is one such example. 
I woke up and felt this immensely oppressive force, sensing something not so good nearby. I fought and struggled and broke free, regaining consciousness near our bathroom outside my room, and has this almost instinctual calling. Something is in the house that shouldn't be. Find it. This was not the first time, and I had learned prior to catching my spiritual breath. It was very similar to being physically pinned. It's exhausting. Moving forward, I went to my roommate's room. I looked around and saw this seven-foot-tall grey humanoid. It was just staring at him as my friend laid flat in his bed. But when it took its eyes off him and looked at me, my friend shot up in his bed. 90 degrees sitting. The thing then transformed and tried to shoot past me, but I intercepted it and wrestled it. I woke up in my body then, and the next day asked the roomie about it, being intentionally vague. He had told me he woke up abruptly at the time, said morning from an unpleasant dream or something. I've had many such experiences in and out of my body. Always that same instinct, get whatever it is out. All my life I had, and luckily still have, the constant feeling that someone is watching over me. Otherwise I wouldn't be here writing, and I think this is why I'm sensitive about certain events. Anyway, when I still lived with my family, we had a dog, Toby. A mischievous little guy. One afternoon, the two of us were home alone. He was in the living room, sleeping in his favourite armchair, and I was in the bathroom drying my hair with a very noisy hairdryer. At a certain point, despite the noise, I heard my name called by a child voice, loud and clear. I turned off the hairdryer. I was puzzled because even if my parents and my sister had returned, we were all adults. The house was in complete silence, so I turned the hairdryer on, and after a few minutes, I heard the same child voice calling me again. It was so loud that I started thinking it was in my head. I put the hairdryer down, determined to check the house this time. I opened the bathroom door and I found Toby sitting outside with an annoyed expression on the muzzle. With the same attitude he entered the bed bathroom and lay down on the carpet. I checked the house but we were still alone. So I asked Toby if he called me and he turned his back on me, still annoyed. To this day, I can't help but believe that he got bored and found a way to connect to me, to open the door and that he was annoyed by my slow response. But the thing that oppressed me most was the child's voice. It was beautiful, and the fact that he called me Mary, just short for Marion. I still find it moving, but maybe I'm only crazy. When I was young, I stayed in a three-room flat with my family. I've never actually seen a ghost or anything, but I've heard one before. I think I was 14 years old at that time. I had just returned from school and no one was home. It was bright outside. I threw my backpack on the floor and headed straight to my room, wanting to use the computer. In my room, there were built-in cupboards just beside the door and the computer was all the way at the farthest end of the room. It was a small room actually. So like I said, I dumped my bag and headed to my room and went straight for the computer. I squatted down in front of the CPU, and just as my finger was about to hit the power button, I distinctly heard a loud whisper coming from the cupboard. It sounded like a child's, and it said, let me out. It was very quick and loud, too loud for me to ignore or dismiss it for something else. I was scared as hell. I froze there in front of the CPU, with my finger still hanging just in front of the power button. I froze for about 15 seconds. I didn't even dare look sideways to where the cupboard was. I silently counted down to three and ran the hell out of my room. I remember sitting by the front gate until someone came home. I didn't tell anyone about this though. I have a sister who claims she can see things. I say this because there's no way for her to prove to me that she can see. and I don't want to entertain her shenanigans. Maybe she can, maybe she can't. Who can say for sure, right? So anyway, ever since we moved to this house, she claimed that there was a ghost of a small girl who carried a teddy bear and liked to be in my mom's room, apparently. 
I never saw or had any slightest spooky feeling, so I didn't believe it. In my room, we had a double-decker bed at the time, and in front of that bed was the study table where I was sitting one night doing my homework. My sister was sleeping on her bed behind me, so my back was facing the bed, right? And if she rolled onto her left, she would face me, and if she rolled to her right, she'd be facing the wall. So there I was, doing my homework. I suddenly heard my sister say, she's beside you, you know. When I turned around, my sister was awake and was just looking at me from my general direction. And I just gave her an annoyed look because I knew who or what she was referring to. She went on to say, she's just standing beside you, watching you. Needless to say, I told her to off, to which she turned around and went to sleep again. We've since moved to a bigger flat and I've never experienced anything here, but my sister has claimed to see my doppelganger a few times. Maybe I'll keep that for another time. I live in England in a two-story flat, and I've always believed in the paranormal. But my dad does not believe in any type of ghost or anything paranormal. I never thought that this flat was born to However, as I got older, I started to feel uncomfortable by myself, and I saw shadows downstairs at the corner of my eye. Now, there's an attic directly above our second floor, but there's no way for us to enter it if we cannot access it in this flat. The only way to access it is by having a which is above all my neighbours' houses. However, the attic above my flat is the only one which is blocked off, and there's no way to enter it. I have the last flat on the end of these 18 council flats. There are no neighbours above us, just the attic, which no one can access without that key, and they would still not be able to get above our flat. One night about two years ago, all of the family was in bed, and it was about 3am. All of a sudden, I heard something crash above. It was so loud that it woke all of my family up, and we all got up and stood in the landing together. Then, after that bang, we heard three loud footsteps, and the sound of something being dragged behind these footsteps. It was so scary, as we knew that nobody can physically get or be up there. My dad was not convinced it was a ghost. Somebody somehow got up into the attic. So we went outside to check if the communal attic door was open. I followed him outside, and it was completely just like what shut with heavy chains around the lock. I tried to explain to him, how can there be anybody up and down a part of the attic and what box to get into? We came back into the house, and we were all quite shaken up. But they were quite young and was able to get to sleep. But I was awake all night and found it hard to sleep. This experience I started to smell an old cigarette smell every time I didn't smoke cigarettes, and it smoked so old. After the event, me, my brother, and my mum were going away on holiday, but my dad had to stay here and work. He told me he slept with his headphones in, and he was even listening to people by himself. So tell me, what those noises were? The family, we still have no idea what those noises were, and since then, we've heard many strange things. I used to live with my ex in a two bedrooms house with her kid, stepson, and our kid. It seemed to be a very normal house, nothing eerie and no weird feelings in the house, until it became dark. We spoke to our neighbor about who used to live in the house out of curiosity. He told us it was an older guy, late forties, and his wife the same age. They were both alcoholics, which was evident as when we first moved in, there was wine and beer bottles all over hidden in the overgrown grass. He then told us the man had died in the house in the front bedroom upstairs, our room. Later on, his wife died in the hospital. He said they were very argumentative with each other and never seemed happy to be together, but carried on anyway. So the first experience we had was not long after we'd moved in. It was my birthday. And the ex had got me a dad mug from our kids. I used it all the time. It was my cup for my tea. One day, we went up to her mum's for a few hours and had dinner there. 
We came back, got the kids to bed as normal, and went down to relax with a cup of tea and some TV. I wanted to make tea, but my cup wasn't in the normal place. I searched and searched the full kitchen, but it had genuinely vanished. The next day we woke up, and there it was, sitting right in the middle of the floor in our bedroom. We most certainly would have noticed it going to bed with the light on. Nights started to become a bit more eerie after a while living there, with the odd noise but nothing to properly spook us. Then one night, there was a loud bang downstairs. I got to go and check. I heard a pouring and dripping noise in the kitchen, and I turned the kitchen light on and the full tub of oil had been tipped over and the lid had been opened. I thought that was kind of strange. Then it became a bit more obvious in trying to get my attention. Whenever I was alone in the house, I would hear chatting coming from upstairs, if I was downstairs, and vice versa. The chatting also sounded like it was two people almost arguing with the tone of the voice, but I could never make out what was being said. One night, me and my ex were in bed as normal, and had nothing at all happen that night until the morning. I was sleeping, and all of a sudden I couldn't breathe. I felt myself struggling for breath, but couldn't breathe at all. My eyes shot open. And I even felt it, almost like two cold hands on my face, one covering my mouth and one over my nose. Fair to say, I was wide awake and woke up my ex and told her straight away, and with everything happening, she believed me. During all this, me and my ex were arguing as well. We weren't getting on at all, and I don't know if it was arguing and creating a bad atmosphere or energy, fueled what was going on. A little backstory for more context. I live in a small town with around 300 people. At that time, my grandparents, my mom's parents who live next to us, left the town to go to the funeral of my grandma's brother. The drive until there is like four or five hours long, so my dad drove them. Now at the house, it's just me, my mom and my aunts, and my three-year-old cousin who came to visit, and we're spending the night. Around 10 p.m., my aunt calls my uncle and asks him if after work, he'll stop at our house and spend the night too. Or is he going to continue on the road and go home? My aunt and uncle live in the next town around 30 minutes from us. He tells her that he doesn't know yet, but we'll call her. After this, we continue chatting and laughing at my cousin, who was making silly faces. At some point, we move into our parents' bedroom because they have a huge bed that fits four people easily. So now we're in our parents' bedroom with the TV on, some cartoons to my cousin. We're laughing really loud and generally making a lot of noise. Now for the next part, I have to add that the walls in my house are thin. And from my parents' bedroom, you can easily hear the front door open and close. If you really want, you could talk to someone through the wall. That's how thin it is. We're laughing and the TV is on, but for a couple of seconds, everyone is quiet. There's no reason for this to happen. It just seems that the conversation died out at that moment. In this moment of silence, someone knocks on the door. The knock was so clear and strong that I could hear it like it was next to me. We think nothing strange about this, and my mom gets up thinking that it was my uncle, who decided to spend the night and simply didn't call. Now mind you, it's almost midnight, and my mom has a really weird fixation with this hour. So generally, she doesn't go to open the door immediately, and instead stays in the kitchen doorway and calls my uncle's name. From the bedroom, I can hear my mom talking, but no one answers. I lock eyes with my aunt, and we both know that's not my uncle. My mom comes back into the room, albeit a little bothered by the situation, because she's a very spiritual person. But we laugh it off and say that it's just my grandma's brother that came to visit. When my grandparents and my dad came back the next day from the funeral, we told them our encounter, kind of laughing it off. My grandma then says that she and her two sisters shared a room for the night, and they too heard a strange knock on the door. Honestly, I don't want to believe it, but it wouldn't be the first time strange things happened to us. This event occurred back in the beginning of October 2019. I don't know if it was actually paranormal, but it certainly creeped me out. A little backstory. 
a branch of my mother's side of the family moved from Illinois. They were actually all immigrants from England to the Pacific Northwest County I currently live in back in the 1880s to work in the mining and logging industries. At least three subsequent generations of the family moved here at the same time. A number of these family members were buried in a family plot in a historic, large, and still active cemetery on a hill overlooking the town I lived in. There were a total of five people buried in our family plot. My great-great-grandfather, I.B., was buried in 1911. My great-great-grandmother, E.B., married 1927. My great-grandfather, N.B., buried 1940, son of I.B. and E.B. My great-grandmother, D.B.B., married 1991, wife of N.B. And my great-great-aunt Sadie, real first name, buried 1902, aged 12, daughter and youngest child of I.B. and E.B. Now to my story from October 2019. I was riding in the passenger seats of my husband's truck. We were driving to my husband's brother's house. We were passing by the cemetery. I have a great interest in my family's history, so I've done a good deal of research about them, and that's how I know where many of them are buried. The family plot is located about 25 feet in the cemetery's fence, and about 30 feet from the road that passes by the front of the cemetery, the road we were driving on. The plot is marked with a large headstone and has the surname carved in large letters facing the road. It's very easy to spot. There are some bushes along a portion of the fence line of the cemetery, but they're not present where my family plot is located. On this clear October afternoon, as we were passing my family's plot, I looked out my window as, it, as I always do if we're going by. I was surprised to see someone sitting on my family's plot, facing the large gravestone. I turned my head and body to see her as we progressed down the road, and I got a pretty good look at the back side of her. Saw her for around 10 to 15 seconds, I'd say. The road's 25 miles an hour, and I would say my husband was going about that speed. It was a small female in a long, off-white dress with some ruffles on the shoulders. To me, it looked old-fashioned, like something that would be worn by a girl or woman during the late 1800s. She was sitting with her knees pulled to her chest, and her forehead was resting on her knees. I only saw her left arm. It was wrapped around her bent left leg. Her brown hair was long, and as far as I could tell, it was lying loosely down her back. I caught a glimpse of what I think of black boots on her feet. She didn't move at all while I was looking at her. I asked my husband if he saw a girl in the graveyard. He said no. He had been concentrating on the road. I told him that I saw a girl sitting on my family's plot. He just grunted and said that was weird. I thought a lot about her on the way to my brother-in-law's house, and while we were visiting, we took the same route home. By that time... It was dark out, so I couldn't see anything in the cemetery. It wasn't well lit. My mind went straight to Sadie, who died as a preteen and was buried there. She could have been around the same size as the girl I saw, and during her life, would have worn something like what the girl was wearing. Never seen an image of what Sadie actually looked like. So I was fully creeped out by what I saw. It could very well be a living person dressed in Victorian era clothing. That does seem more likely but it's odd and kind of creepy nonetheless. I find it far more disturbing that there was a living person using my family's grave as part of some dress-up game than for it to be a ghost. I'm the only one in my family that's descended from these people that lives in the entire county. Thinking about Sadie does make me a little sad. Sadie died so young. Child and infant mortality was very common back in 1902, and it was very sad. I have no information on what she died of sickness or accident etc when i was a kid five to seven i lived in a house with a shadow person i called the void man it only appeared in the laundry room and would stand in a doorway and stare at me or poke its head around the door frame to peek at me i'm not a religious or spiritual person so the few people in my life who I've told these experiences to are surprised that I would ever say that I saw such a thing, 
or believe shadow people could exist. I'm a logical person, and I do consider myself a skeptic, even though I know what I saw and I know that it really happened. Maybe it's just that I tend to be skeptical about most things. I will, as briefly as I can, describe a little history of the house and the changes my family made to it because I believe it applies to what I experienced. I'm originally from a small farming town in Washington State. My parents bought a ranch-style house in this town in the early 1980s, and we lived there until 1993. The house was built in the mid-1950s and was known as a party house in the 1970s when my parents were in high school. My parents did a lot of work on the house as it was a little run down when they bought it. There were many holes punched in the walls and doors. The original hardwood floors were in rough shape, and the family room and original master bedroom had disgusting, torn brown and lime green shag carpeting. The original master bedroom also had wood paneling on the walls. We tore out all the paneling and replaced the horrifying shag carpet with vinyl and new carpeting and renovated the bathrooms. The main change that my parents did to the house was they added a new master bedroom to the back of the house and converted the old master bedroom into a large laundry room slash sewing and crafts room for my mom. The new master bedroom was added on the other side of the master bathroom from the original master bedroom turned laundry room. I mention all this because during college, I mentioned what happened in this house to a friend of mine who was really into the paranormal. And he suggested that the renovations that my parents did in combination with it being a former party house where there had been drug use and possible violence, stirred something up. So, one side of the house was set up as follows. From the front to the back, family room, the new laundry room, the master bedroom, then the new master bedroom at the back. The kitchen was to the right of the family room if you were facing the door to the laundry room and could be partially seen from the family room. So now, to my experience. I do not know how old I was when I first saw it, or how old I was when I last saw it. I lived in the house until just before my 8th birthday. I was between 5 and 7 years old, that much I know. I mostly saw it when I was in the family room. It would stand perfectly still in the doorway from the family room to the laundry room. It seemed to be staring at me, but it had no eyes. It was a pitch black void in the shape of a human. There were no discernible facial or other body features on it. It was a body with a head on top. The outline of the body appeared to be slightly fuzzy or misty. I would say it was over six feet tall. I would just stand there and stare back at it. I felt frozen and didn't know what to do or say. I felt like I couldn't speak if I wanted to when it was there. I remember feeling a sinking feeling when I saw it. I have one distinct memory of staring at it in the doorway to the laundry room, and I could see my mom working in the kitchen. She was standing at the stove and could have seen it if she had turned her head to her right. She didn't notice it. I named it the void one at some point. Staring at it was like staring into a deep void that would swallow me up. I don't remember feeling fear exactly. When I saw the full shadow person, it was more that I couldn't feel anything. That wasn't the case for the other way I'd see it. It would like to peek its head around the door frames at me. It would do it several times in rapid succession. That would terrify me. I think that that was its intention. I would usually go running off to my room or go find my mom. I would only ever see the void man in the laundry room, never in any other room in the house. I only ever saw the full body of the void man from the family room looking into the laundry room but it would peek its head out at me from both of the laundry room doors, the one leading into the family room, and the one leading into the master bathroom. If my parents ever saw anything, they've never mentioned it, and I've never mentioned it to them. I'm sure there are those of you that will say, you were very young, you must be remembering wrong, or you made it up at some point, and then it became real to you over time. I wish this was the case, I really do. But I remember the void man very vividly, I know that I saw this thing, whatever it was. We moved out of that house in 1993 and moved into one we had built. I've never seen anything like what I did in that house ever again, but the experience has followed me for my whole life. I'm nervous about open doors and what I might see on the other side.